European Union. And uh, after Malta, it's the uh, the second smallest member of state of today's European Union. Uh, but nevertheless, it was uh, present at the birth of uh, United Europe, and along with uh, Belgium, Germany, France, Italy, and the Netherlands, um, it was one of the um, signatories of the Treaty of Rome in 1957. And the ensuing creation of the, the European Economic Community uh, formed the nucleus for the, the later EU. And, uh, the city itself it enjoys equal rights with uh, Brussels and Strasbourg as one of the three official EU capitals. Very influential place, power and money. As I mentioned, one of the main industries there is, is steel. Um, in 1952, it was the foreign ministers of the first European community, uh, the coal and steel community. Um, they chose Luxembourg as their uh, provisional headquarters. So that's where all our money comes from. So as um, Luxembourg has a ha quite a, a stable high income economy, uh, the result of this is low unemployment rates and low inflation. So as I said, uh, it's quite heavily dependent on that international trade. And it's, uh, the economy is based mainly around the banking, insurance, telecommunications, and as I mentioned, the steel, which uh, dominates the industrial sector. Although they are diversifying, including um, products such as uh, rubber and chemicals, but steel is the main one. But since the 1970s, uh, the constant growth of the, the financial and the banking sector, that's kind of balanced out the decline of the, uh, the, the, the steel. So even if one goes down, the other's, the other's gone up. But even though it is one of the richest countries in Europe, bear in mind, it's also one of the most expensive. So unless you're buying, as I mentioned, uh, gasoline, cigarettes or alcohol, <laughs> everything else is uh, a little bit pricey. <clears throat> to give you a bit of a, a comparison, say, um, roughly, roughly income for a, for a bus driver, um, say in Portugal, they were there in about 600 euros a month, whereas in Luxembourg, uh, same job, you'd get between three to three and a half thousand. So you can see it's a big difference, but with the, the high wages need to compensate for the high living costs. And it is also part of the, uh, the Schengen area. Um, the Schengen Agreement um, led to the creation of uh, the Europe's borderless Schengen area, so it's, you don't need to do passport control when you go over your borders here, it's free travel. We must be getting close to the, to the border. Oh, I think we've just crossed it, we've just crossed it, we've just crossed it. So we're now in Luxembourg. Hey. <laughs> So yeah, it's free, uh, free reign of travel um, around Europe as part of the European Union. And of course, you will have seen the, uh, the flag um, dotted around. It's the uh, azure blue flag, which consists of a circle of 12 yellow stars. And that's the emblem of the, the, the Council of Europe and the uh, European Union. It's, used to, uh, it's also often used to indicate Eurozone countries. Uh, more loosely to represent the, the continent of Europe or the countries of Europe. The number of stars, they don't vary according to the member, so if we get a new member, it doesn't get an extra star. Um, it just stays with the, uh, with the original 12. And to give you the, uh, the official symbolic description, Against the blue sky of the Western world, the stars represent the peoples of Europe 
and a circle a symbol of unity. Their numbers shall invariably set a 12, the symbol of completeness and perfection. So that's the story of it. And just like the 12 signs of the zodiac represent the whole universe, the 12 gold stars stand for all the peoples of Europe, including those who cannot or will not take part in the EU project. Obviously a lot of debate around that at the moment, with <laughs> the UK's current situation. But we won't go there. That's the only time that's 